All right. So, what's good, y'all? Back with another one. Y'all know what it is. All right. It's another one that says so TV. I'm your favorite bye boy. Like, comment, subscribe. Hey, let's go ahead and get right on into it. So, today, I want to react to three different topics. All right. So, first, I got the Shannon Sharp topic with him going live accidentally <laughs> and you know, going viral for this moment of him smashing a female on audio is what we hear in the live, right? Then I also want to, want to react to Inalee Chopper's baby mom coming out and basically admitting to the same thing that I've been saying, that he's doing it for clout, attention, etc. cetera, all right? Also, on the Inalee Chopper part, I want to go ahead and react to everyone in the gay community or is viral that, you know, comparing him against NLE, I mean, comparing him against Lil Nas X and basically saying that it's about colorism, um, that that's a part of the reason why we're, you know, the majority of the gay community is choosing NLE over Lil Nas X. All right. So I want to address that. And then last, Bryce Shear Gray. All right. Because that was requested. So, all right, let's go. Now. First, I want to go ahead and start off with the Shannon Sharp story. So, backstory, we know what's going on. He went viral in the last couple of days for accidentally going live and while he's smashing a female and we hear the audio and a lot of people was like, you know, running with it, boosting him up, sharing it. So that's how he went viral. People were saying that he basically was like, making funny skits like he was in there like how baby boy mom was like Tyrese's mom was with that big muscular dude that was in the baby boy movie when they was in the room smashing like they basically like you know he was in there doing stuff like that like you know like hyping him up and just basically being childish about it I don't understand what was so uh, why that was such a viral moment but you know a hey, I'm learning more and more every day how feeble-minded people are you know what I'm saying so But y'all know I'm gonna call bullshit. I right? <laughs> so real talk when I first saw this before I even showed a clip with Cameron because Cameron came out and gave the exact perception that I have on it. But before I show uh, Cameron's perception on it, I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all mine. Y'all, that was bogus. That was a scheme to go viral. He has also been accused of being gay a lot. So I think that this dude went on here and did this to try to like debunk those rumors. And that was really hurting his pride. And you know what? This kind of goes back to what I was saying about men, about people being insecure and needing validation and stuff. It's unfortunate, but like he's unattractive. He's unattractive. OK, if he didn't have money, if he wasn't a football player, he wouldn't really get no attention. And the reason why I'm saying this is because. A lot of people think that because these people didn't gotten successful and they become rich or whatever, that because they have options to get whoever they want, it's not in a genuine way where they're getting people whoever they want based on them. They're not liking them for them. They're liking them for what they can do for them, their resources, their money, clout, etc. So a lot of people know that, especially unattractive people, because they were used to being turned down a lot before they got big money, popular, whatever you want to call it. Before their money came up, their class went up, they wasn't getting no play. So they know that they had to get to where they got to get to get the attention that they got. To me, that keeps you feeling ugly on the inside, no matter where you go. Just like broke people, when they come from being from poverty or from poor, they have this mindset of feeling like that. It's like it's a trauma thing. When you are come from a demographic that's deemed as less than people grow up still with that complex, even though they come out of it, even though people may look at them like you're not ugly no more. Like if you grew up ugly and you're not ugly no more. I know a lot of people who took a long time to accept that they were actually attractive because they were told that all the time when they was younger. So that's all that they like, even though that they're not no more, they didn't grew up. They didn't glowed up. People might say they didn't glow up. They will always still have that little insecure boy in them or girl in them that feels ugly, feels isolated, less than, etc. OK, so when he did that, that's exactly what I got from that. My intuition told me like, 
oh my god like he's so insecure like you had to do this like this is like this is what i'm trying to say y'all when i said that about Polly in my last video i was saying that insecure people fall in these kind of traps i wasn't saying that Polly comes from people deciding though everybody has different reasons for what they do but what i'm saying is at the end of the day whatever their reasons is it's got an insecurity attached to it okay i am intuitive and i can tell when people are bullshitting and they're trying to cover up their issues by not addressing them and and you know covering up with a cloak a fake cloak and a fake identity or a mask i can tell that okay what he was doing was he was trying to get attention and people to also stop calling him gay because he's been accused of that ever since he came out that car that truck and everybody he went viral for that when he came out that truck in front of that store and that nigga was walking with that bow leg looking all fishy and stuff you know what i'm saying so also most gay men can tell that he's gay you know what i'm saying like this is the same I, I consider him just like tyler perry like they may never admit it but i'm gonna always know that they are a part of the lgbt community because i can tell and it's obvious it takes one to know one okay He's definitely a part of our community, and I didn't feel like that was real at all. I feel like the audio felt fake. It felt forced. I don't even know if he was really smashing nobody, none of that. It felt like somebody was paid actor, like real talk. So I feel like he did this to just straight up debunk the rumors because he doesn't want people thinking that he's gay, which when you go out of your way to do this type of stuff, it makes people think you're gay even more, all right? And then on top of that, the second part of the reason why he did that, like I just said, the being unconventionally attractive to majority of people, these people grow up with complexes, no matter how successful, no matter how attractive they become, they will never forget where they come from. Okay. We never forget where we come from. So I feel like he did that in a way because he looked just like Miss Netta, like straight up. And I feel like people who look like that, they will do anything for attention. They will clout chase. They will do anything. They will break their neck. They will do the most wildest, blasphemous stuff just to get some attention. I don't put nothing past an ugly person. I be scared of ugly people a lot. I'm going to keep a real G with y'all. Okay. I've been hurt by ugly people. They have been very spiteful, jealous. They do a lot of toxic stuff and they put your, they make you involved with their issues when you ain't got nothing to do with that. They, they internalize, they project, they think you attacking them all the time. It's just, it's a bunch of shit with ugly people. Okay. And they, they consistently misunderstand on purpose to de deflect from their real issues. You know what I'm saying? So they'll say that you're being, you know, uh, judgmental or whatever, but really at the end of the day, that's my opinion. My opinion shouldn't affect you. Someone commented on my, uh, video the other day and was like, you're being, insensitive to unattractive people but that doesn't give y'all the right to be hateful mean spiteful just because everybody said that y'all was ugly it's y'all's duty to find a way to feel comfortable and be happy with yourself and know your worth regardless of what everybody else says i said gucci don't tell or ask nobody what they think that their bags should be priced at it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks of you you value yourself and you're going to find the people who are there for you who are for you you don't want nobody liking you just because the way you look no way. I promise you. Us people who are handsome and attractive, beautiful people, we know how it feels to be used just for looks. It's superficial and it's... Y'all dodge a lot of bullets by that, okay? There's a pros and cons on each side. So miss me with the trying to feel bad for y'all shit, okay? And people liking you just for money isn't good either. And that's why... I say it's best for people to love themselves because people will love you for many reasons that you may not be aware of that may not be genuine at all. It's not something to flex about because people like you because you look good. It's not something to flex about because people like you because of what you have and what you can offer them. Both of those are superficial. And if they can't fuck with you on your worst day, they shouldn't be with you. And if they can't fuck with you when you struggling, they shouldn't be with you. All right. So anybody who's ugly and struggling and y'all get to where y'all want to get in life, remember where y'all come from and how people treated you then. All right. Because you won't care about fake attention when you know it's fake unless you're that insecure. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why I need to do the self work, because when you're that insecure, you allow people to do you any old kind of way and you will accept any form of attention. That's why he's cool with it. He got on there talking about some ha ha. Yeah, y'all know how I do. Like, man, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and play what Cameron said. 
Cameron said, and then we're going to go ahead and move on from this, all right? You got to go to Instagram. Then you got to go to post. Then you got to go to live. Then they make sure that, do you, you sure you want to go live? Yeah. You got to hit four things to go live. And to me, that Fact. was, my, he ain't go viral in a little minute. <laughs> and he's like, yo, let me go viral. Because look, <laughs> let's check out the whole scenario, America. Look, first of all, I have a few things to say about this. The, the, the vocals is too clear. How you hear it that clear if you right not next to your phone? Sound like he had a mic Larry was selling me. Sound like he had the earpiece. <laughs> it's mad clear. You know what I'm saying? That's first and foremost. Secondly, you go up and apologize, but at the same time with your apology, you say, yo, Chad, I told you I'd get it in, man. I told you, I, I told you I'm getting in. <laughs> so you apologize in the ESPN of your eyes, then you're bragging. I think this whole thing was staged. His, you know what happens after that? You talking about, oh, y'all crashed the site. All my merch sold out. All of a sudden, now all the merch sold out after, or after you on IG Live grunting. So, uh, so I told you. <laughs> yeah, man. I think this was a ploy. I think it's a Ponzi scam. But if it worked for you, um, it worked for you. But that's my personal opinion. This was a Ponzi. Me and Church, Big Church was talking about it. All of a sudden, you apologizing, bragging. Merch sells out. You're not gay. It's, it's too much going on in one Instagram joint for me. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, and honestly, as a content creator, even if I empathize with him, yes, when you haven't gone, you know, when your numbers ain't spiked in a minute, niggas get desperate. I've said that before in my, in my videos. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when you get... Like at my level, I still get to do this as a hobby and I'm comfortable with it and it's healthy for me. Once you get to a certain level, y'all, that's why I'm not tripping. I'm going, my channel's going to grow to where it's going to go, but I'm not rushing it. I'm going to let it do what it do because when you cloud chase and you do all that to get where you get, you have to keep that up and then you have to keep doing fraudulent stuff just to keep your numbers up. And then it becomes where your mental health and all that's affected. And to me, this is another form of that. When you have to do all this fake stuff to get people's attention, that is a big L on your mental health. They don't show y'all that side of what they're going through behind closed doors just because they want y'all to believe that, you know, it's all it's all good because people really don't feel good when they get to where they want to get and they get more successful, more money than they ever imagined and they still don't be happy. That's a lot more of another layer of growth to go through right there. So, yeah. All right. So, facts on camera on, on that one. Now, let's move on. Baby mama, I'm going to go ahead and play her clip real quick, and then I'm going to respond to it. All right. My baby daddy. He's not gay. He is not gay. <laughs> He's not gay. He just trolled y'all because y'all think he gay. Or whatever the fuck. I don't know why y'all troll him, but oh, it's a that. marketing strategy. It's a attention seeking thing. Like <laughs> he not gay. Um, I mean, if he was, that's his preference. It's not really, but I'm coming out. I want the world to know. The YouTuber, what YouTuber's name? Say so TV. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Got to let him show. <laughs> All right, let me find out she was talking about my channel there because I've been the one that get that be on his head a lot. But, you know, there's a couple of us, so never know. But, yeah. So, yeah, what I want to say to that, basically, you know, she was just, that's Inalee Chopper's baby mom that he had a baby with within the last year. And she's on there on IG Live that basically, I wouldn't even say she was defending him. I really feel like she was being transparent. No bullshit. Um, she kept it G. She said, no, he's not trolling. I mean, no, he's not gay. He's trolling, y'all, which is what I said. He's gay baiting. With gay baiting, trolling, uh, Kyle chasing whatever you want to call it same stuff 
then she said it's about attention. Like I said, he wasn't getting the attention that he needed, obviously, because if you were, you wouldn't have had to do this. Come over here and beg for our attention, panhandle the gays. You know what I'm saying? So obviously you weren't getting the attention that you wanted. I was right. OK, then. What else? Oh, the best part about that was when she said if he was, then that's on him, which she was very uncomfortable and fidgety, by the way. I don't know why she was so fidgety, but I think she knows. A lot of women do get an inkling about their men messing with men. So she might just, you know, let his nigga is the father of her child. So she's going to have his back. You know what I'm saying? So she's going to say, hey, I don't think so. But, you know, she made sure there at the end of the say if he was because if this nigga come out gay, I don't want to be embarrassed now. Y'all. So if he is just know that's his choice, that's his life. And I love her for that. You know what I'm saying? Because she let it be known that at the end of the day. I'm not about to sit here and act like this. You know, I'm not about to disrespect him and act like it's something wrong with it or anything. Like she kept a G. She was real about it. She was uh, empathetic about it. And I feel her on that. But she did look uncomfortable as if she felt like this nigga might really be bisexual. All right. I just got to call that out because I call what I see. All right. I call a spade a spade, period. Regardless if you like it or not. That's one thing y'all got to admit about Say So TV. Y'all come back because at the end of the day, if you agree or not, at least you know you got the truth. Other content creators, A, you don't even know. And that's just be real. You really don't know. They could just be saying something because they're getting paid or something from a sponsor or something. You never know. All right. But I'm keeping it real. Straight up. So then from that, I also saw a lot of the gays talking about sharing this status right here. It says, so we not going to talk about how y'all praise and flock to NLE, who is a straight because he has realized value of the black and gay dollar, 100, but beat down and completely disown Lil Nas X, who actually represents all of our community. Real talk. And don't get me started on him being deemed more appealing because of his light skin, masculine aesthetic. Meanwhile, Lil Nas X is dark skin. Gay Butch Queen. I love both of them, but to not acknowledge his hip not to acknowledge this hypocrisy would be intellectually dishonest. So then somebody commented under there that I got that captured. I seriously do not rock with pride events that get excited to support non-LGBT artists. All right, real talk. I I'll fuck with that. All right. So to respond to that, on my opinion, I never did look at it like there was a color thing at first until that was presented to me by Psych Perspective, well, Geo. Uh, and then I did start seeing it online. So let me see here. So we're not going to sit here and talk and act like we praise and flock to NLE, who is a straight because he has realized value of the black dollar, but beat down and completely disowned Lil Nas X. Yeah, so... Where that part comes from is gays have a fantasy obsession. We've been accustomed to, to fantasizing over what we cannot have. Okay, let's just be real. So that is the reason why NLE won there. Because first of all, let me just say on NLE's per behalf, I do think that another reason why him and his team did this was because before he even started doing this, we were sharing his shit of him sagging and stuff all the time. He has the aesthetic that most gay black men had a crush on somebody. He has the aesthetic of what most of us had a crush on at some point in high school, some point that we couldn't get. You know, the typical light skinned dude with the nice body that's masculine and tattoos. And, you know, like he, he, he just got the aesthetic. He just got the aesthetic. All right. So I feel like what most of us do internally and, un and subconsciously is we, uh, you know, kind of put him as the model of what we didn't get because none of the other rap dudes that's in his age group really fit that. Like, you know, NBA young boy is not attractive enough to us. Uh, who else can I think? You y'all get where I'm going with that. You know what I'm saying? It's just not nobody else has really got that aesthetic that we like. But as far as like the disowning Lil Nas X part, the reason why Lil Nas X was disowned, let's not forget, like just because we put him up against uh, NLE, uh, Lil Nas X did a whole lot of clout chasing. He did a whole lot of fake stuff. That whole Bible thing he did 
after he did the whole satanic thing, I wasn't feeling that. And a lot of people wasn't feeling that. Okay. So we also don't like how he went from masculine to feminine. A lot of us are not liking the manipulation. We're knowing and notice we're starting to catch on to manipulation. We, we could tell that we're being pandered to. So that automatically makes people, you know, uh, disown it. They don't want to, they don't want to, you know, rep that when they feel like it's being forced. So I feel like Lil Nas X was just forcefully doing a lot by his team to push him into a narrative to be popular to gay people because I think what happened there that with the experiment was where they realized is that you either and if you come out, you have to go ahead and be feminine and flamboyant, because if you come out and you're not, they're going to get the same reaction that I get a lot. Now, I. Is it works for me because I'm a YouTuber, but why it wouldn't work for like somebody like them is because they have to sell and be on top of these charts. You know what I'm saying? I just say y'all can't really be honest and truthful and be yourself because that doesn't always sell. So it works for me because I'm in a different demo. I'm in a different field than them. But when it comes to them, how I noticed with music and gays and people who support that, the reason why Nikki is big is because she's got support by a lot of feminine flamboyant gays. Same with Beyonce, same with a lot of these female rappers, etc. They what I'm basically saying is y'all gay men identify more with feminine flamboyant figures, meaning women or another flamboyant man. So I feel like they went on ahead and tried to save his face because they came out with him being a masculine gay man at first. And he wasn't getting a lot of attention because a lot of gay men, most gay men cannot relate me. I'm rare being this open, honest, myself, comfortable in my skin and still being able to pass as a straight dude. That's rare. So to try to sell that is not beneficial for these big ass, you know, industry plants and these labels and stuff because they need to get to people who relate. That's the reason why Sexy Red and all them is big because they got to people who can relate to them. Most people, as much as we may not like her, y'all, I've had to realize in this world that we are in amongst of people who are mostly degenerate and low mindset, low quality and low IQ, low emotional intelligence and low mental IQ. So you can't put like, that's the reason why R&B and stuff isn't really re uh, resonating with them because they didn't dumb down people so much with these phones and social media that these niggas can't uh, comprehend nothing complex or outside of low quality intellect. So the reason why Sexy Red is big is because there's a lot of people who relate to that, even though that that may not be what we should be pushing because it's not positive. It's what most people want to see. You get what I'm saying? That's who most people think like. Not most people are. This isn't the 90s where most people were mature at, at, at 25. Like they've 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 set it back, y'all. They've set us back like the maturity level of everybody's lower IQs. Everything's lower now. The quality of everything and got lower straight up. All right. So that's where I'm going to dissect on that. And then the reason why that also he's not as big as they thought is because there's a double back on that. Yes, they relate. So Lil Nas X sold there for a minute because he re he was relatable. But then after a while, Gays only really appreciate people or like and put people up on a pedestal that they can't have or that they want to smash. Once you became flamboyant, Lil Nas X, a lot of them gay dudes didn't want to smash you no more. They could relate to you, but they also don't like themselves. I've been saying that. Flamboyant gay men do not like themselves. They like masculine men. So even though like they got already Nikki and, and uh, Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B and stuff and Glorilla and, you know, all them, they don't need no male figure. What I'm saying is, y'all, gay men do not support other gay men. They support women that they view themselves like because they feel like they relate to women. And then they boost up dudes that they want to smash, which is like NLE. So a person like Lil Nas X that's right in the middle, somebody that I could relate to as a flamboyant dude, and I don't want to smash, I'm just going to support the female rappers because this nigga ain't came out with nothing really like that because they don't they don't like they self 
Y'all, they don't like other flamboyant dudes like that. And that's the reason why I said that's the problem right there in our community. I've asked people plenty of times, straight dudes, why do y'all sag? I get crickets. Fem feminine flamboyant dudes, why y'all don't like each other? I get crickets. Older dudes, why y'all don't like each other? I get crickets. You want to know why? Because people don't want to face the truth and deal with their shit. So what they rather do is make up excuses, play run around mental gymnastics with they self as well, not just with others, but with they self, because you can't be a flamboyant dude making justification on why you're only attracted to masculine dudes and not feminine dudes, but you're a feminine dude and you expect people to be attracted to you. We're not straight heteros. We are gay or bisexual, which means the same. Older dudes, if you can't be attracted to yourself, I don't understand how you could expect a young dude to waste his time dating you as an older man. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, we got to get more secure with ourselves. We got to become more one with ourselves because that's why we're that's how we'll be able to resolve these issues within the community. We're not going to get nowhere. And I'm not talking about just the gay community. I'm talking about the black community as well. Because the only reason why this nigga's lit like this is because people are obsessed with black men's sexuality. And that's what he's capitalizing off of. And I'm not going to blame him for that. Because that's y'all's problem. And uh, so to continue, and then the last paragraph of that said, and don't get me started on him being deemed more appealing because of his light skin masculine aesthetic meanwhile Lil Nas X is a dark-skinned gay butch queen I don't think it has anything to do with him being dark I think if we was to switch it up and Lil Nas X was dark I mean and look and NLE was dark I think he would get somewhat of the same appeal but you know what nah let me take that back I do think that they do yeah you're y'all right yeah uh, the light skin part it is actually a plus because they don't like themselves. Dark skinned men like light skinned men for what? They'll try to say, oh, I like something different. I don't want someone that looks just like me. I want contrast. There's too many options to go with someone that looks just like you. I got that comment a lot too when about the doppelganger couples. It was like, why would you date someone that looks like you when you can just date someone like they like there's so many options? You should I'd rather have someone opposite than me. Well, that might be most likely because you don't really like yourself. You've probably been beat up by, you know, mentally being abused, being talked down to for your skin color. So that's why a lot of females who are dark skinned go and get light skinned baby daddies, white baby daddies, so that they can make their child not go through what they went through. They don't want their child to go through the, the hate that they went through. So let's just be real. We got to face that as well. That is another issue. Yes. Uh People prefer to be light skinned. The this in America, black people do put light skinned people up on a on a pedestal. But the real only reason why I was giving it a little, uh, I was saying I wasn't really agreeing with it with, at, at first is because I feel like that pertains to women mostly. I feel like when it comes to female rappers and female entertainers, that's when the colorism is really big. But when it comes to like males, I don't feel it being that big. All right, I'm just being honest. That doesn't mean it's not happening. I do think it's definitely happening. And in this case, it could work for a lot of people. But the main thing that is going for NLE is that last part, the masculinity. Lil Nas X messed up being masculine. I mean, being uh, feminine, flamboyant, and dark skin. That is literally the least favored in the community. It's light skin, masculine dudes, brown skin, masculine dudes, dark skin, masculine dudes. Then it's light skin. Uh, feminine flamboyant dudes, brown skin, feminine flamboyant dudes, dark skin, feminine flamboyant dudes. They always end up at the bottom. So, yeah. But if you're dark skin and masculine, that puts you up more. You get what I'm saying? We so superficial. This is crazy. Like straight up. All right. Now. Going on to Brightshear Gray, so I can wrap this up. So, yeah, y'all wanted me to comment on Brightshear Gray because 
I posted him in the last video uh, with him basically gay baby and talking about he's about to, you know, do a video with a guy, do a video with a guy. So he recently posted who's ready for my first guy on guy video. So he keeps posting that same thing, like trying to get cloud, trying to get people to go ahead and subscribe to his OnlyFans. That's why he keeps posting that. And then when y'all go to his OnlyFans, he may not even be hooking up with a dude. I'm feeling like that's what he's going to end up doing. Uh, he may end up hooking up with a dude. He may not. But I think that what's most likely going to happen is he's going to bait y'all into it, then get his subscribers up on OnlyFans. Then eventually he's going to slowly, gradually, they all slowly, gradually. This is the tactic as a straight man. All right, because I done figured it out. So as a straight man... Who's coming into our community and is trying to profit? This is their this is their tactic. This is the main tactic. I'm gonna give hints that I'm bisexual without admitting it. Get people to tune in to the curiosity and find out about my sexuality. Then I'm gonna do all this sexy stuff that is questionable that can go to women and men, right? So that is still questionable. Then the third phase is I'm going to start playing with my ass, showing my ass, doing stuff that girls don't like. But you can't really call me gay because I'm doing this for money and I'm not sleeping with dudes. OK, then the fourth phase is. And see, each phase is only uh, new when the clout stops from the last phase. So, you know, now he's on the second phase. I'm going to on the third phase. Now I'm going to start. He did the whole I'm showing booty hole and stuff. He was at first having sex with a girl. Showing his booty hole, all that other stuff. Now he's on the on to the third phase. Now I'm gonna start hinting more gay stuff because because the clout went down. So when the clout goes down, then they got to do that third phase. Now I'm gonna start, you know, uh, acting like I'm about to do a scene with a dude, or the fourth phase is what I should say. Now I'm gonna start acting like I'm gonna do scenes with a dude. See how many bite on, see how many bite on that. If I get a lot of bites on that, then I'll actually do a video where it's like real short. And it's not really exposing much, but there's a dude in the room jacking off with me or something. But we're not touching each other. So nobody can actually just call me gay yet. Right. Then it's the fifth phase. Of. Where they decide if they're going to go ahead and dive straight in and get more money from gay baiting or have I capitalized enough to where I'm going to go ahead and back out and just go straight to the go back to being straight to the straight community. And leaving people to guess because I didn't capitalize as much money as I wanted to, needed to, or that I think I'm going to without taking a bigger L later. It's all about playing it safe with these niggas so that they can get the most profit without the least negative judgment and reaction. <laughs> Straight up. There's nothing more to it. All right. So, yeah, y'all. Uh. The last little part I'm going to just add on here because I didn't have much to say about it, but I have been requested to make a video about it with the dreadhead dude that passed away or he was unalive, that he was the OnlyFans creator and he was unalive. So I'm going to just briefly say what I think about that, y'all. I don't. The reason why I wasn't going to make a comment about that is because I don't know much about that. And I don't tune in to like the uh, male escorts and uh, prostitutes uh, lifestyles like that to know much. Now I have slept with a lot of them. Um, <laughs> I low key feel like kissing and telling. Like I low key feel like kissing and telling just because all right, I'm going to just say it because it's been years. Like so the porn stars that I have slept with y'all, I slept with Virgo. I actually dated Virgo for a second. Before I found out that he was actually taking D on camera. All right. I dated Brooklyn Kid. Well, I didn't date Brooklyn Kid. I used to smash Brooklyn Kid in Atlanta. I used to smash Mustang. I used to kick it with. He used to come over, kick it with. He used to smash my roommate when I used to live in Atlanta. So I, so I didn't smash Mustang, but I know people who did. And he was trying to fuck with me one day. He had walked in the crib and was like, nigga, who is you? Like, the fuck? Like, nigga? Like, he was trying to fuck with me, but I don't fuck with niggas who fuck with my friends. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Arquez. I could have smashed Arquez, but I did not. He was trying to recruit me to his little porn uh, thing, productions, and I wasn't going. All right. Uh... 
I met Giovanni. I wanted to, now that was one I wanted to smash that I didn't get to, but I didn't try to really either. But if I would have smashed one that I didn't, I would have smashed Giovanni. And, oh yeah, I said Arquez. Like, Arquez got a nice ass. Like, I didn't actually see him in person at a strip event, like at a strip club event. Like, he got a nice ass and he danced on me and everything. And I didn't even tip him and he danced on me. Like, so yeah. Uh, who else? I kicked it with Phoenix in True, but I did not smash them. They wanted me, Phoenix was trying to get me to smash True, but I didn't smash True. And I wanted to smash Phoenix, but we just, me and Phoenix ended up just being friends. Like we had a homie vibe where we would just link up and smoke and talk and shit. Like he would put me on game about a lot of these porn stars, about how Castro be getting smashed uh behind closed doors oh giovanni he told me he how he used to smash giovanni when he wasn't even supposed to be smashing no other getting smashed by no other dudes besides city boy and he was getting smashed by him like yeah i'm just telling y'all this just because like <laughs> i did uh had his channel when i was you know out out there in them street single i've been in a relationship for the majority of the time i've had this channel so a lot of y'all didn't get to see my single hot boy stage you know what i'm saying so i'm just i'm just expressing I ain't trying to expose nobody or nothing. They ain't no secret. I mean, to them, these niggas is porn stars, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I feel like I'm missing someone, but I'll leave it at that. A couple of these new porn stars have tried to link up with me and do collabs and stuff and try to like, and I'm like, I don't do porn. They're like, oh, I thought you like a content creator, like you would be dope to do, like you should do a scene and get your, your followers up and da, 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 da. Specifically Tay, that dude that be getting smashed by all them fucking dudes, like he asked me, like he was trying to holler at me there for a minute too, but yeah. No love lost to any of them. I fuck with anybody who's doing what they got to do to get theirs. I know that a lot of people got to do what they got to do, so I ain't judging nobody, you know what I'm saying? But as far as homeboy that got unalived with the dress he was beautiful that nigga was bad all right i'm gonna just say that he was a baddie all right so uh rest in peace to him and you know uh love goes out to all his loved ones and everything but he was bad i don't know what happened i don't know if it's gonna come out about what happened to him or what they said that he was shot that he was actually unalive by someone. So there just hasn't been no big, like there hasn't been no commentary on it to where I can understand what's going on with that to make full commentary based on that. So stay tuned on that. That might come out to have more info for I can give y'all. All right. Oh, and I am, me and baby are going to Atlanta this, well, in two days, at, oh, tomorrow. Damn, it's Thursday. We're going to Atlanta tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to see my sister. I want him to meet my sis. My sis is Naj from Now That's TV. Um, he hasn't met her yet. So I've been with him for damn near two years now. So I'm like, hey, you need to meet my sis, like straight up. So he actually surprised me by booking a ticket for us to go down there. And I didn't even know nothing about it. He'd been talking to my sister behind my back and they didn't, they didn't come you know, collaborated with surprising me with a, a ticket to go down there and see her. So I'm excited about that. However, I am not prepared or ready to deal with all these stares that these Atlanta dudes give to every attractive dude. They don't know how to keep their eyes to themselves. They always stare and trying to get somebody to look back at them. And I'm telling y'all right now, if y'all recognize me down there while I'm down there and y'all want to talk to me, y'all can but do not be talking to my boyfriend and all up in my boyfriend's face or looking at my boyfriend because I promise you I will go straight in your shit. I do not play those games. I'm very protective about my relationship, especially now because this is a real one that I know that I can be solid with and comfortable with. Because we're solid and because we're comfortable and because we're secure with each other is why I'm vicious about him. It's not about insecurity. If I was insecure about the relationship, I wouldn't fight over a nigga one bit. And I promise you. That's what y'all don't realize about a real nigga. 
real niggas don't fight over people that they know is for the streets or that they feel like it's easy or that they feel like other people can take from them. If I feel like a nigga can take somebody from me, I'm most likely just buying pass and time with him. He's a placeholder and I don't really fuck with him like that. So yes, you can be all up in his face, all that. I don't care. But when it comes to one that I'm actually solid with and I got a relationship that I have been wanting and manifesting for years, you damn skippy. I'm going in every time. So be very fucking careful. All right. And be respectful and treat us how you would want others to treat your relationship when you get one that you are comfortable and in love with, not one that you are disposable about. Because I feel like a lot of gay guys do not respect relationships because they don't respect relationships. They're set on in their own relationship. All right. So I'm just putting that out there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we about to go down to ATL, have fun. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. So so yeah, that's it for this one, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. No, I don't give a fuck about what anyone say. No, I don't give a fuck about what anyone say. Baby, how much I really take?